This is amazing. Now we are going to see about LLM OS. So what is LLM OS? Andre Karpathy proposed this initially. So in this, a large language model is acting as an operating system. As you can see here, a large language model is being the center orchestrator. The large language model have access to the calculator, Python interpreter, browsing capability, file system access, and also other large language models. The input and output is received either as a video or audio. This is what Andre Karpathy proposed. But we are going to modify slightly where we are going to use GPT-4.0 as a large language model. We are going to provide tools, calculator, Python terminal. We are going to provide other AI agents or multi agents, provide internet access and have the ability to store information in memory and knowledge. So when the user asks a question, the large language model OS is going to use all these available tools and then give a response to the user. We are going to build this from scratch. And finally, I'm going to teach you how to set up a user interface like this, which have access to all the tools, all the AI agents and able to perform a task. In this, I'm going to add a URL to knowledge base. It's about Pali Gemma and click add URL. This will automatically add the data to the knowledge base. What is Pali Gemma? Here it's using the knowledge base to retrieve the relevant information. Now I'm asking, give me latest AI news. It's using DuckDuckGo search and getting all the latest AI news. Next going to ask, can I invest in NVIDIA? This is going to delegate tasks to multiple agents, mainly to the investment assistant agent. And it's going to generate a detailed report about what's the current status and will give us some updates or recommendations. Next, if I ask what is 10 factorial, it's going to run the calculator and give us the answer. Next, if I ask, is Docker running on my computer? It's going to use the shell tool and get all the relevant information. In this way, when I asked all those questions to the LLM OS, we used calculator to calculate. We use the terminal or the shell command to check the Docker. We used multiple AI agents to research about investment. We use the browsing agent to browse about the latest news. And finally, all the information got stored in the knowledge when we uploaded the PDF. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about LLM OS using PyData. In this, we are going to create tools, create multi-agents, create the LLM OS agent, and finally the knowledge base and memory. These all components are from this image which we saw earlier. Only one difference is that we are going to give text as input because currently we have access to only text API. As soon as we get access to audio video input API to GPT-40, then we will be able to exactly replicate what Andre Karpathy proposed. But for now, we are going to play with the text as input. I'm going to take you through step by step on how to build this from scratch and also set up your user interface. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. First, pip install, file data and all these components. I will put all the information and code in the description below. So after typing this, click enter and it's installing the packages. Next, export your OpenAI API key like this and then click enter. This you can generate from OpenAI website. Next, we need to create a database. In this instance, we are going to use Postgres database. So just run this command and you need Docker to install this. Make sure you have downloaded Docker from docker.com. So after this, click enter. Then you type docker ps. You'll be able to see that the PG vector Postgres database is running. Now let's create a file called app.py and let's open it. Inside the file from typing import list, then importing all these packages such as PDF reader for PDF reading, website reading for website reading, different tools such as shell tools, file tools, Yahoo Finance tools, and we'll be going in depth each of this. Next, logger equals logging.getlogger. Next, providing the DB URL. This is pointing to the Postgres database which we have just created and it's running in port number 5532. Next, going to create a folder called Scratch. This will be used later for saving the output or even saving the data. Totally four steps we are going to do. First is to create tools. Next, create multiple agents, then create the LLM OS agent, and finally, knowledge base and memory. 
it's same as we see in this image. First, we are going to create tools, which you can see here, and also internet search tool. Next, we are going to define the multiple agents, multi-agents with other LLMs. Third, we are going to create the LLM agent. And fourth, create the knowledge and memory. So A, set up LLM OS. Here first, we are going to create a function which takes all these variables. There's nothing to be confused. It's all the list of things which we saw on the image, such as calculator, file tools, shell tools, which you can see here. Next, DDG search, that is DuckDuckGo search for searching the web, which you can see here. Next, different AI agents, as you can see here, other LLMS. Now we have just given the variable name. Now we are going to create or set up all these things. Using file data, it's easy. So first step, create tools. Tools, we are creating the tools list. Here we are going to list all the tools. Extra instruction. Now adding four tools, such as the calculator. Tools.append calculator will automatically add calculator to the list of tools. Adding DuckDuckGo search will automatically add the web browsing capability tool to the list of tools. And we adding shell tools, file tools to access files. So the first step is done. Next, step number two is creating multi-agents or other LLMs. Other LLMs, multi-agents. Here, first, we are creating a list to define the list of team members or agents. First is a data analyst agent who is capable of doing data analysis using DuckDB assistant function. We are providing the instruction, data analyst, analyze movie data and provide insights. Now next, we are creating the Python assistant agent. This can write and run Python code. We are providing the scratch directory. That's what we created earlier to save files and run it. And we are adding that to the team member. Next, research assistant who is capable of doing research. We are just providing instruction of what tool to use. Here we are using EXA. That's the tool for searching the internet. So this research assistant can use EXA tool to search the internet and summarize in this format as instructed. Next, investment assistant agent. So this assistant agent can get the stock price, company information, and give a investment report in this format. We are providing tools such as Yahoo Finance tool to get the stock price and company information. That's it, we have completed creating multiple agents. Next, we are going to create LLM OS agent, who is a centerpiece. Together with that, we are also going to create knowledge base and memory. Let's see how to do it. So create LLM OS agent, knowledge and memory. Same as before, we are creating an assistant. That's the agent, overall agent, like a manager agent, LLM OS, who is going to delegate tasks and use tools to achieve the given task provided. Same as before, we are providing the instruction. You're providing the large language model, providing a description on what it is. You are the most advanced AI system in the world called LLM OS. And in the instruction we are providing, if the user asks about a topic, first always search your knowledge base using search knowledge base tool. If you don't find relevant information in knowledge base, use DuckDuckGo search tool and find relevant information. So even within this, we are providing the storage assistant, Postgres storage. That is the memory and here is the knowledge base. That's where your embeddings get stored. As soon as you upload a file, it will get converted to embeddings and then stored in this knowledge base. Here we are providing all the tools which we have created earlier, the team members. Those are the list of members or multi-agents which we created earlier. And finally, we are returning the output from LLM OS. Overall, this is the whole function. Mainly it's taken by the big description. So the better the instruction we provide, the better the response will be. That's why we have to provide these many number of instruction to the large language model. Now we have completed all these steps. Now the final step is to make the user upload a PDF and then ask a question based on the PDF to this LLM OS. So we have already created the LLM OS. Now we are going to add document to knowledge base whenever the user upload a file. Then let the user ask question. So the initial LLM OS setup is done. Now the second step is add document to knowledge base. Now we are going to create a function called add document to knowledge base. Here we are using a PDF reader to read the content from the PDF. Then that PDF data is getting loaded to the knowledge base using knowledge base dot load documents. That's it. So this function just reads the content from PDF and saves that in our database or knowledge base. Now the final step, the user asking the question. We are going to create 
a function called question assistant. In this, we are asking a question as a user and the assistant is going to respond. By calling assistant.run and providing with the question, we get answer from LLM OS and we are returning that response. That's it. Now we have completed all three steps. Now we need to put all things together. If name equals main, we are providing nest async io.apply. So this function lets you keep on running new function while waiting for the response from another function. When running LLM OS applications like this, a multiple calls are created. So rather than waiting for the response from each query, we can keep on running. So this function is used to do that. Next, we are going to call the assistant, the main function set up LLM OS. That is the first step which we created earlier, as you can see here. There we are providing all the required tools and all the required assistants or the agents. Next, we need to add a PDF file to the knowledge base. Add document to knowledge base. We are providing the sample PDF. And this is the sample PDF, the impact of technology on education, benefits of technology in education, challenges of technology in education, and finally conclusion. A simple file just for us to test. Next, we are going to ask a question. What do you know about education? Next, calling the question assistant function with the question and the assistant name, that is the agent, main agent. Finally, printing the response, that's it. So here, if you see, set up LLM OS, that is the first function which we created. Add document to knowledge base, that is the second function which we created. And question assistant, that is the third function which we created. Here, we are putting it all together and we are ready to run the code. In your terminal, Python app.py and then click enter. Now you can see, it's loading the data in the knowledge base after dividing that to chunks. Here you can see loaded one document to knowledge base. Then it's searching the knowledge base to get relevant information about education, which we have just uploaded to our knowledge base. And finally, we get the response based on the question we asked. The question is, what do you know about education? And here's the response. The impact of technology on education, the benefits of technology in education, challenges of technology in education, and finally conclusion. Now we just uploaded a file and the LLM OS is able to use appropriate tool and give us a proper response. So in this, we uploaded a file and asked a question. And as soon as we uploaded a file, the LLM OS saved that in the knowledge base. Then when we asked a question, it used that knowledge to respond to our query. That is one use case. Now we are going to try various other use cases by creating the user interface. To create a user interface, git clone github.com slash phidata hq slash phidata and then click enter. Now let's navigate to the phidata folder. Inside that, navigate to cd cookbook slash llm os and then click enter. Now pip install hyphen our requirements.txt and then click enter. This will install the required packages. Now we are going to export our exa API key like this and then click enter. exa is used for searching the web. After doing that, type python hyphen m streamlit run app.py and then click enter. You can even directly run streamlit run app.py without python hyphen m. If you find any issues by running just this, then add python hyphen m towards the beginning, just so that the streamlit application is able to identify the correct environment. Now click enter. And now you can see the user interface is getting loaded. And here is LLM OS. Here I'm going to choose all the tools using the GPT-40 model selecting all these agents. Now we are going to add a website URL about Pali Gemma and click add URL. Now it's processing the URL, loaded all the data to the database, which you can see from the backend. It divided that to chunks and loaded one document to knowledge base. Now I'm going to ask what is Pali Gemma and then click enter. Now you can see it searched the knowledge base with the query Pali Gemma and it's giving all the th information regarding Pali Gemma multimodal comprehension, versatile base model, and much more. Now I'm going to ask, give me the latest news about AI. This time it's going to use the browsing tool, that is the DuckDuckGo search news, and it's getting relevant information, as you can see here with all the latest updates. Next, I'm going to ask, can I invest in NVIDIA? Click enter. Now you can see the main agent is delegating task to the investment assistant agent and it's going to prepare a report for NVIDIA. And here the report is getting generated with the core metrics, analyst recommendation, financial performance, growth prospects. And with this information, we are able to decide whether we can invest in NVIDIA or not. Next, I can ask, what is 10 factorial? Now it used the factorial tool, that is a calculator, 
and got the answer. Now we have completed building this completely from scratch. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.